junior college team, only one senior among six on the ball club, only one four-year senior. Jody Sylvester, the referee, he works with Ted Valentine and Art McDonald. Balls in the air, tapped high in the air, controlled by Cincinnati. Gibson out, lead Donald Williams for it. Cincinnati will set it up. Phelps overrunning the steal on the pass to Van Exel. They hooked it over to the sideline. Intercepted by Phelps. He gets it to George Lynch. Lynch will get it to Donald Williams coming down on the right. He pulls up, banks it off the glass, and Carolina's out to a 2-0 lead in the very first few seconds of play. Donald Williams coming off a 22-point effort against... Uh, Arkansas on Friday night. Now coming down floor against the Carolina Press. Gibson gives it right back in the middle to Nelson. Ball knocked away. Blunt recovers. Sticks a 13-foot jump shot that's no good. Montross down with a rebound. Whips it right sideline to Phelps. Tar Heels on the run. Goes in the right corner to Reese. He fires from there. It's a little too flat. It bounces high. Rebounded by Blunt. Blunt protects it from George Lynch. Will now put it in Van Exel's hands. We played not quite a minute, just over 45 seconds here at the Meadowlands, and already the action from the very outset, fast and furious. Van Exel against Phelps in Carolina's man-to-man, -man, driving to the baseline, double team, puts up the shot, went in and came out. That ball nearly disappeared down into the court and then popped out over the front into Montross's hands. Phelps managed the dribble right by Nelson, gets it baseline to Brian Reese. Soft shot is up and no good by Reese. Reese is 0 for 2 in the early going. Quick outlet pass with front court to Van Exel. He'll give it to the breaking Martin into the lane, knocked away Phelps, recovered Lynch, got it off to Reese. Blunt is back. Reese takes him down left of the lane, puts up the shot, no good. Reese is 0 for 3 in the early going. It remains 2 0 Carolina. Tar Heels are getting the shots. Gibson will drop it off to Martin. Martin for the layup, and it's tied at 2 2. Eric Martin, the senior from Covina, California, grew up a Carolina fan, but said yesterday in the off-day news conference that playing Carolina's tradition meant absolutely nothing to him. Down the sideline to Donald Williams. He drives in, up off the glass, no good, tapped outside, and controlled by Blunt. Carolina getting the shots it wants, but the Tar Heels can't get any to go down after that first one. Carolina 1-5 of and a long outside three, good by Van Exel. And it is now a 5-2 to two Cincinnati lead. Van Exel hitting his 80th three-pointer of the year in 236 attempts. Against the Cincinnati pressure, Lynch puts it to the floor, gets across the timeline, knocked out of bounds by Gibson. He tried to help Jody Sylvester with a call, but it will be Carolina's basketball. Rodel is in, and Reese comes out, and I think right here the Carolina coaches will just set Brian down and try to get him to relax. It's obvious that playing so close to his Bronx home with a lot of family and friends here that he is noticeably a little tense, and who wouldn't be with what's at stake? Phelps in the midcourt area against Van Exel. Works his way now in the penetrating drive into the middle. Faking, bounces it low to Montross. Turn, put it up off the glass. It was blocked by Terry Nelson, and it will be ruled a goaltending call. Montross gets the bucket. It's 5-4 Cincinnati. Carolina will apply pressure backcourt. Nelson inbounding the ball. Got it to Blunt. Long full court pass to Gibson. Layup is good, and it's 7-4. Terrence Gibson. Phelps picked up at the timeline by Van Exel, not yet across the timeline. Now he is down the sideline. Ball knocked away in the double team. Recovered Gibson, got it to Van Exel. Van Exel driving on Lynch, puts up the shot, and it bounces around. No good, but tapped up and in by Nelson. Nelson will be credited for the tap in, and it's 9-4. to four. Cincinnati is out to a five-point advantage. Montross caught in the double team, drops it in the backcourt to Lynch. He's across the timeline, gets it baseline. Right back it comes to Lynch. He lost the ball. It's loose on the floor. Cincinnati is up with it. Blunt on his left knee will drop the ball all to Nelson. And so far, Cincinnati's defense dominating the early minutes after Carolina got good shots in the first couple of minutes but could get only one of five to go down. Van Exel will give it to Gibson right wing. Down low to Blunt. Blunt turns. Shoots over Montross. Two flat. Rebounded by Lynch. They look for the quick outlet. It's not there. He drops it off to Phelps. Phelps will get it front court. Now he'll give it to Rodel on the left side. He works against Nelson. Phelps now comes to Donald Williams out front. Gibson getting on him man to man. Williams driving down right of the lane, stripped for the ball by Gibson, out of bounds, it will belong to Carolina underneath the goal. With that substitution, Eric Martin coming back in the lineup, and Nelson is going out. Carolina's problem right now is at the defensive end, not offensively, where they've been beaten back down court uncharacteristically several times. Inbounds pass, midcourt area to Lynch, to Montross, now left side, they move it to Phelps. Phelps against Cincinnati's man-to-man -man will go cross-court to Donald Williams. Williams, they get on him quickly, can't get the shot away. To Riddle, one dribble, then to Phelps. They look for Montross. Cincinnati is fronting him down low. Goes to Riddle, bounced it to Montross. Blocked up high, and the foul is on Bostic. Curtis Bostic, the 6'5 sophomore from Brockton, Mass. Jumped out of the gym and getting that block on Montross, but he's charged with a foul. It's the first against the Bearcats. 
uh, he was way up there, and Bostic has that lifeguard physique. He's a, was a slam dunk champion of a score all-star team's tour of Russia, and he's a martial arts specialist, so he is athletic. His mom died 17 months ago, and he has dedicated the season to her after he underwent disc surgery in December of 91 and missed all of last year. Montross, like he did Friday night, experiences some early foul shooting problems. He can't get the first to go down. It remains 9-4 in favor of the Bearcats. Montross shooting into a lot of Cincinnati fans in that south end zone. The next free throw is no good. Rebounded by Lynch, right back to the lane, stripped to the ball, knocked away, and recovered by Cincinnati. Plucked out of the air by Bostic. He will get it now to Gibson. To Van Exel, he shoots the three. It is no good. Rebounded Montross down deep inside. Gets the outlet to Phelps. Phelps down against Gibson. Trying to go through. Cannot. They force him to the sideline where they'll try to pin him. He comes to Montross out high. He looked left, only there was nobody home down in the left corner. Rodel. Phelps to Sullivan. Off the baseline, and it's good. Pat Sullivan just entering the lineup a moment ago. Brings Carolina within three with his first field goal. A 10-foot jumper off the right baseline. Double team by Carolina in the backcourt. Passing around the double team is Gibson. He got the ball to Nelson. Now it's front court in the hands of Van Exel. Van Exel will come right side to Martin. Martin holding it against Pat Sullivan down in the corner. Lynch tried for the steal. Couldn't make it. Van Exel's baseline jumper. How good of the tap follow will either be Nelson or Bostic. Bostic gets credit for it. It's his first field goal. And again, he went high in the air to tap it in. 11 to 6 Cincinnati. Phelps will go cross court to Montrose in the rodel. Down low to Lynch. Knocked away in the whistle. And foul is on Bostic. That's number two on Bostic. He has fouled out of only one game this year and has 65 fouls to his credit. He has been a starter in 21 of 28 games for Cincinnati, and he has come into today's game obviously inspired. Corey Blunt is coming back, but we get a break in the action with Cincinnati ahead by five after about five minutes of play at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Heels are in a five-point hole at 11 to six because they've been beaten down court a couple of times thanks to a Cincinnati transition game that gets on you quickly. The Tar Heels have handled Cincinnati's press nicely. They've worked it for good shots, but those shots haven't dropped in. Reese is 0 of 3. Montross got on the line, and he did not convert on either one. So the Tar Heels shooting 3 of 7, 43%. The Bearcats 5 of 11, 45%. And you can call and talk to Coach Dean Smith about tonight's game on the next Blue Line radio show. Thursday night between 7 and 8, the Blue Line statewide Thursday evening. Fifth basketball meeting ever between the Tar Heels and Bearcats. Carolina has won them all going back to the 1958 Dixie Classic and a 90-88 win that the late Everett Case said may have been the best basketball game ever played in fabled Reynolds Coliseum. Carolina trying to attack the Cincinnati zone goes to Rodel from Sullivan on the right side. He's moving toward the right wing. Now gets it back out front to Phelps who works against Van Exel out high in that zone. That goes to Riddle. Down low to Sullivan. Turn around. Baseline is good. Sullivan has knocked in a couple of field goals after going one of four on Friday night against Arkansas. And it's 11 to eight in favor of the Bearcats. Cincinnati works the ball front court against Carolina's full court zone pressure. Gibson out front it comes to Nelson. Nelson who works a lot of clubs in L.A. as a stand-up comic. Bounce passes now to the baseline. The jump shot from there is no good. Knocked to the side. Recovered. Lynch got a hand on it, but Van Exel went into the corner to reclaim it for Cincinnati. He'll get it back out in the midcourt area. Cincinnati black uniforms with red and white trim. The traditional Bearcat colors. Carolina in its own white. Van Exel top of the circle for three and it's good. Van Exel makes his second three-pointer of the ball game. He shot only six of 21 against Virginia. Lead pass to Sullivan. Caught it at the baseline. Too far underneath. Works his way back up the sideline on the right. Back out front to Phelps. Phelps working to the left side. Will come right back to Rodel with it. Gives it to Sullivan. He took a quick look to Montross. Now comes baseline. Back out to Phelps. Gets it to Lynch. Lynch moves in. Tries to put it up off the glass. No basket. Whistle and the foul is on Corey Blunt of the Bearcats. Jody Sylvester, the referee, coming out from underneath. And the foul on Blunt will be his first, and it's the third team foul against Cincinnati. There's not been a foul called yet against Carolina. Williams and Reese are back in for the Tar Heels as Rodel and Sullivan sit down with 14.05 to play in the first half, and George Lynch going to the line trying to cut into that six-point deficit. Sullivan made his minutes count. Two big jump shots, both from about the same spot, that right baseline from maybe 12 feet away, and he swished them both. Carolina coming into the game shooting 70% from the line. Really very effective at the line until the late stages of the Georgia Tech game in the ACC tournament, and Lynch's free throw is good. Georgia shooting 66% at the line. He had his 14th double-double on Friday night against Arkansas. It's 14-9 here at the Meadowlands this Sunday afternoon. 
The winner gets to play again next Saturday in New Orleans. Both free throws are good by Lynch. And that makes it 14 to 10. Carolina chops the lead to four. Lynch will sit down briefly as Salvadori comes in, which means Carolina will have size along the front line now with Montross and Salvadori. Inbounded against the Tar Heel pressure. It was there, but not real tight. Three-quarter court. Van Exel across the timeline against Phelps. He'll give it up to Martin. Martin trapped on the sideline. Finally got it baseline, and the drive down underneath. The pass intercepted by Salvadori. It was Gibson trying to go back to Blunt. Phelps pushes it to Reese. Reese on the left side. Looks for a release. Goes cross-court to Donald Williams. Williams going to the baseline. Jump shot is rimmed out. No good. Tapped outside by Blunt. Saved by Phelps. Back to Donald Williams. He gets free for another jump shot, and that one's no good. Rebounded by Martin on the left side. He'll put it in the hands of Van Axel on the right. He pulls up, takes the three. No good. Rebound. Reese took it away from Montross. They were both there in white. Now it's off to Williams. Quickly front court on the dribble on the left sideline. He will give it to uh, Phelps. Goes cross court to Reese. He shoots the three. No good. Carolina has missed three outside shots against Cincinnati. It remains a 14 to 10 Cincinnati lead. Van Exel coming front court indicates the offense with five extended fingers on his uplifted right hand. Gets it across the timeline against Phelps. Now whips it down the sideline in the corner to Gibson. Right in the front of uh, standing Serge Wicker at the Carolina bench. Now comes to Nelson to Martin. He drives baseline. Gets double teamed. Pushes it back to Blunt. They're going to let him take the foul line jump shot. It's no good. Rebounded by Martin. He sticks it back up. And it's blocked out of bounds by Salvadori. His 42nd block of the year. And that brought 39-year-old Bob Huggins, the head coach of the Bearcats, off the bench to protect. Lynch is coming back, and Montross will sit down, which means Salvadori will move to the middle. Cincinnati's points are coming off the break or by outside shots. Carolina's defense is very tough inside. Gibson will inbound right underneath the Cincinnati basket. Got it into Martin. He ends it right back to him. Out front now to Van Exel. Nick Van Exel moving toward the right side, and Carolina is showing zone now, the 2-3 zone that was so effective Arkansas. High post pass. We get a whistle and a trip called on Derek Phelps, knocking Larry or Terry Nelson down. And the foul on Phelps is not only his first, but the first team foul. Cincinnati's ball along the sideline, and it will be inbounded right in front of our courtside location. Ted Valentine will give the ball to Terry Nelson. Nelson, the 6'6 senior from Long Beach, California, the top post defender for the Bearcats. Doesn't score a lot, but... Gives an awful lot to this team in a lot of other ways. Blunt to Gibson. High post to Nelson. Out to Van Exel. Phelps moving out on it. Back it goes to Gibson. Now the high lob on the alley-oop dunk. Derek Martin. Martin with his second field goal. Got in behind the Tar Heel defense. It's 16 to 10. Williams double team just as he crossed the line. That's their favorite spot. Gets it away to Brian Reese. Reese on the drive. Blocked out of the air. And it will be a foul on Cincinnati. Brian was going to jam it. And Huggins is really working Art McDonald as he comes out front to make the call. And I believe it is on Corey Blunt. No, it's on Eric Martin. And it's his first. But it will be the Bearcats' fourth team foul as Brian Reese will shoot two. One characteristic of the Bearcat front line is that most of them will pass up a wide-open eight-foot jump shot in exchange for taking the ball to the hole. At the defensive end, they have that same kind of aggressive mindset. They will challenge you at the rim and try to block those slam dunks up above the level of the cylinder. Reese's free throw is good. He gets his first one to go down from the field. Statistician Bob Woodruff shows me that Brian is 0 for 4. 13 points, 8 rebounds on Friday night in the one over Arkansas. He definitely needs to get uncorked for the Tar Heels. Reese eyeing the front of that rim. Very deliberate with his motion. Arches it up, and it's perfect. Two points for Brian Reese. 16 to 12. Carolina back within four, having trailed by as many as eight. Sometimes a player can find his stroke at the free throw line, and Reese looked good on both of those. Van Exel across the timeline against Phelps. Phelps said he would try to stay in front of him, and Cincinnati throws it away. Phelps bothered Van Exel, and then Blunt got screened off the pass down into the right corner. Lynch inbounds the ball to Phelps. Four turnovers for Cincinnati here in the early going. Phelps indicating now the spread offense, I think, for Carolina. And it is. Tar Heels trying to get the double teams and the traps of Cincinnati spread out. Lynch in the left corner, deep left corner, inside to Phelps. Spins into the lane, hands it off to Reese. He fumbled the ball, lost it. Outlet caught by Gibson. He'll give it to Van Axel on the left. Down he comes on the left side, but Williams is back to cut him off. He's looking into the middle, in trouble along the wing, bounced it out front, and Lynch trying for the steal is charged with a foul. Bouncing it to Terry Nelson. Lynch made a diving attempt at it and gets whistled for his first personal second team foul. It'll be Cincinnati's ball out of bounds, but not before we get another break in the action with 11 and a half minutes to go in the first half. 
at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. 16 to 12 Bearcats on a broadcast that is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the NCAA through Host Communications, Lexington, Kentucky. This broadcast is intended solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any publication or rebroadcast of it without the express written consent of the NCAA, Host Communications, Village Sports, and WCHL Radio is prohibited. When the ball is not going in the hole, it makes everything else look worse. You start noticing fumbles and slips and that type thing. The main problem the Tar Heels have right now, and really their only problem, is that the ball is just not going in. They're getting what for them are considered good shots, but not hitting. 4 of 11, 36%. The Bearcats have started 7 of 17, 41%. 15 Cincinnati opponents on the year have shot less than 40%, including three in a row in this NCAA tournament. On the other hand, during the year, six Cincinnati opponents shot 50% or better, and Cincinnati lost two of those six games. So if you can get your shots, and if they go in, you got a great chance to beat this ball club, as Indiana and Arizona did during the regular season. Carolina back to the 2-3 zone. Cincinnati attacks into the corner it goes. Now back out front to Van Exel on the left. High post to Nelson. He'll go baseline to Corey Blunt. Blunt whips it back to Van Exel. He shoots the outside shot. And Cincinnati's threes are going in, especially three from Van Exel. He has made all three of his three-pointers, very similar to that start that Arkansas got off to the other night in five attempts from McDaniel. High post to Phelps. Gets it to Montrose on the left. To Reese coming down the lane, and he travels. Brian is just not all there right now, and he needs to get in sync for the Tar Heels to do what they need to do. 19 to 12, Cincinnati with its biggest lead. I had said earlier it was eight. It was as many as six. It is now seven at 19 to 12 with 11 minutes to play in the first half. Van Exel against Phelps across the timeline. He'll whip it right wing to Martin right in front of us. Gets it back out front to Nelson. That goes left side to a newcomer in the ball game, and that would be LaSalle Durden. Van Exel now with a trap chasing him. Gets it over to Durden. Durden will pull up and shoot the three. It's no good. Rebounded by Lynch. Underhands it to Phelps. Left side. Derek gets it front court. Now you give it in the corner to Donald Williams. Williams pushes it right back out to Phelps. Durden got on Phelps very quickly. Or Williams very quickly. Now to Reese at the baseline. Back up the sideline on the right. It comes to Phelps. Phelps stacking everybody else down low. Whips it now off the dribble to Reese. Now it goes to Williams. Down low to Montrose. He fumbled the ball. Tried to recover. Tapped it back to Williams. Williams started to go inside and thinks better of it. Now gets it to Lynch. High post. Lynch down in the lane. Back to Reese. Reese trying to penetrate. Outside to Phelps. Phelps will give it to Williams. Williams moving down left of the lane. Leans in off the glass. No good. Fell out. Tapped outside. Recovered. Loose ball in the lane. They go to the deck for it. Knocked away. And Williams had it. Gets knocked into the backcourt. They're calling it over in the back. That can't but be Dean right. Smith says it was knocked into the backcourt. It looked like the defense provided the impetus for that ball to be into the backcourt. It was a loose ball. Both teams were wrestling for it. Well, Art McDonald, I think, is saying that Donald Williams was the last guy to touch it before he crossed the timeline. He didn't have possession of it. He just touched it. It went across the timeline where it was fielded by Carolina. Now, look, I thought a Bearcat reached into that pile and knocked it backcourt. Oh, well. Tarios just aren't catching the ball. They're not handling the ball. I think they're bothered by the, the flicking hands of Cincinnati. Coach Smith is a bit upset with a guy on the clock for not sounding the horn and getting the Carolina substitutes in the game. He wants to keep rolling in and out of there. Van Exel now going sideline to Durden on the left, right in front of the Carolina bench. In the corner to Van Exel, spins baseline, takes the jump shot, and it's good. Van Exel already with 11 first half points, and he is four of nine, including his last three, and Carolina throws it away. Seven turnovers for the Tar Heels, and the Tar Heels are in a deep, deep hole here in the first ten minutes of play. Down nine and struggling a bit. Martin will inbound the ball, gets it to Van Exel. Van Exel had not been shooting well in the tournament. Only 29% in his last four games, but he has come out red hot. Van Exel scoops it off to Martin. He gets the layup right side. Nice ball movement by the Bearcats. Six for Martin, and it's 23 to 12. The Bearcats are on top by 11. Across the timeline comes Phelps. He gets double teamed down the sideline to Sullivan. Comes cross court to Rodel on the right. He'll give it to Lynch. Baseline goes by Montross. Knocked away. Batted out of bounds. And it will belong to Carolina at the baseline. Knocked away by a Cincinnati defender. And in the area was Keith Greger, the 6'5 freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio, whose father, Gary, played at South Carolina under Frank McGuire. 
Phelps will inbound for Carolina. Midcourt area to Lynch. Now top of the circle to Montross. Back on the right to Rodel. Rodel bounces it down low to Lynch. Up for the shot. Tied up. And Cincinnati comes up with a steal. Martin took it right out of Lynch's hand. Got it to Durden. Off to Van Exel. He shoots an NBA three. No good. Tapped up. No good. Gregor with a rebound. Scoops it up and wouldn't go. And Montross had position and Blunt went over his back for his second personal foul. That's also the fifth team foul against Cincinnati. Carolina's ball out of bounds. As we pause 10 seconds quickly, station identification. You're listening to Cincinnati Carolina on the Tar Heel Sports Network. WZZU, Burlington, Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. The Classic Rock Station, 93.9 ZZU. Carolina trails 23 to 12. Less than nine minutes to play in the first half. Helps across the timeline. Getting trapped. Got it away to Lynch. Lynch pulls up, takes the short jump shot, and it's good. George Lynch gets his first field goal. 23 to 14. Nelson will inbound the ball to Van Exel. Phelps is in the backcourt. Van Exel coming front court. Signals movement with his uplifted right hand. Goes to the right hand on the dribble. Now gives it to Durden. Durden working right wing against Williams. Now we'll get it in the corner to Van Exel. Van Exel comes up the sideline with Montross trailing him on the switch. Out into the midcourt area now between the circles. Gregor trying to set a pick. And Montross floors it. He tried to set a high post pick. And Montross just pushed him to the parquet floor. And George Lynch went up and yelled something at his Carolina teammate as if to keep his cool and don't lose his poise. That's number one on Montross, 13 foul Carolina. Cincinnati runs an open post motion offense. That means that instead of, say, three around two or four around one, the post will be vacant at times, and different players will take turns flashing into it and looking for the basketball. Nelson's going to inbound the ball. Carolina using five to guard four. He got it into Gregor. Gregor will push it back out on the bounce pass to Van Exel in the midcourt area. Van Exel comes right back to Nelson with it. Right sideline against Lynch. Turning, going to Gibson. Gibson wanted the backdoor cut. Couldn't get it away to Martin. Now he goes to Van Exel. Van Exel against Brian Reese. Shooting over him. Good! Right over the top of Reese's outstretched hands. Van Exel with his fourth three-pointer. He had eight in one game this year. He's got 14, and it's 26 to 14. Phelps will give it to Reese against the trap. Now comes cross court to Williams. Williams will push it right back to Reese. Reese picks up his dribble back to Williams. Looks inside to Montrose. Can't get in the ball. Martin moving around in front of him. Williams circles around on his dribble to Reese. Bounces it to Lynch at the baseline. He goes into the lane. Knocked away. Recovered Reese. He lost the ball. Picked up by Cincinnati. Nick Van Exel coming up with it. 26 to 14, Cincinnati by 12, 7.20 left to play on Carolina's eighth turnover. Martin in the right corner, Montross is on it, he'll loop it back to Nelson, pushes it away quickly to Gibson, he gives it to Van Exel, shoots over Williams, good! Another three! Five three-pointers in the first half, 17 for Nick Van Exel, and it's 29 to 14. Down low to Montross, caught it, knocked away, whistle, foul is on Gregor. Keith Gregor called for the foul down low inside on the lob to Montross. 16 foul against Cincinnati. And right now we got another break in the action before Carolina can inbound it. So timeout on the floor and everything is going Van Exel's way. 6.57 to play first half. Cincinnati 29, Carolina 14. Carolina's in a big hole now, 29 to 14. We'll talk more about how they're getting into that hole in a second. But first, let me tell you that the NCAA is the organization through which the nation's colleges and universities speak and act on athletic matters. It's a voluntary association of more than 1,000 members devoted to the sound administration of intercollegiate athletics, a message, obviously, from the NCAA. All right, on the negative side, Van Exel is hot. He's hit five of nine from three-point range. UC is confident. Obviously, they're dangerous when they are confident. And Carolina's ball handling is very sloppy. Eight turnovers. On the plus side, the Bearcats are doing it from long range. The Tar Heels are also getting on the foul line four of six. And the Bearcats have yet to shoot a free throw. Was I right on Van Exel's three, five, five, of nine, eight, five, five of eight? Five of eight. Sorry. Inbounds to Montrose. Tried to put it up. Rick missed it. Tries to go back up. The fingertip roll is good. Montrose gets his second field goal, and Carolina able to use its size on that inbounds play. 29-16. Nick Van Exel, who went 6 of 21 against Virginia Friday night and 3 of 11. Driving into the lane. Blocked from behind. Good block up top. It looked to be from our vantage point, and we were real close to it. But Jody Sylvester whistles a foul on Carolina. Eric Montross called for his second. 
And it looked like nothing but hands on ball up top from Montross and another Tar Heel. I thought it was Brian Reese, but Van Exel will go to the line. He's been shooting 29% in his last four games. Today, he is 6 of 12, including 5 of 8 three-pointers, and now he's 1 of 1 at the foul line. He made 8 of 15 three-pointers for a career high back in late December against Temple. 30 to 16, Nick Van Exel, the 6'1 senior from Kenosha, Wisconsin, misses the next one. Lynch has got the rebound. Lynch trying to get out of Eric Martin's defensive pad. Got it to Phelps. Phelps double team. Got it to Lynch. Lynch will take it front court right in the middle. Off it goes to Sullivan. Sullivan and working against Gregor goes baseline to Montross. He turns, shoots the short jump shot, and it's good. Off the right baseline, Montross pulls Carolina back within 12 at 30 to 18. Front court pass to Gregor, across the timeline, right in front of the Carolina bench, beats Montross, feeds Martin, knocked away Donald Williams. Martin was going to slam it up to about his elbows, and Martin and Williams, rather, got behind and knocked it away. Cincinnati's ball, but Donald stopped the sure two. Looks like what Dean Smith said in the huddle might have been, let's get Eric a few more touches of the basketball and get him involved in the offense. Garrett Gibson out front. We got a whistle and a foul off the ball is a moving pick or a hold off the ball on Keith Gregor. Son of former South Carolina standout Gary Gregor. That's the seventh team foul against Cincinnati, and Carolina will go to the line. There have been only three team fouls called against Carolina. This is going to be Carolina's meal ticket for a while, I think, now, until their outside game can light up and somebody hits a three, is get on that foul line, and you do that by trying to push that ball inside. Friday night, the Tar Heels fell behind Arkansas, 11 points in the first half, largely due to McDaniel's outside yep. shooting. Today, the Tar Heels have been down by more than that, and Van Exel shows no signs of cooling off just yet. Lynch's free throw. No good. Popped out. Sullivan tapped it outside, but it's into Gibson's hands. Gibson coming down on the right. Williams is back, and he throws it away. Tried to go to Nelson. He wanted to avoid charging into Donald Williams, who had both feet firmly planted, and it would have been a charge had he not given it up. Yeah, Pat Sullivan, I think, should have tried to just gain possession of that rebound. He was there and could have corralled it, I think, with one or two hands, but instead he tried to tap it into the open court. Phelps gets it front court right through the center jump circle here on the parquet floor of the NBA's New Jersey Nets. Van Exel moving out on him. Carolina spreads out its offense a bit, going to a 1-4 stack. Phelps got to get rid of the ball. In trouble. Finally got it to Sullivan. Sullivan working against Martin. Now to Montross, who comes out high to help out. Now to Phelps. Puts it down low to Lynch. Lynch working up for position for the shot. Shoots it off balance. Ball knocked outside. Recovered by a newcomer into the Cincinnati lineup. And it's stolen right back by Lynch. And that newcomer is Mike Harris, a 6'6 junior from Brooklyn. Sullivan feeds away to Lynch. Layup is good. Sullivan driving the baseline. Drew the defense to him. He fed Lynch. He's got six. 30 to 20. Carolina within 10. Montross made that work with a deflection that enabled Carolina to get it. Van Exel backcourt. Got it to Nelson. He'll go back in the middle to Gibson. Out front to Van Exel. Now in the corner to Martin. He drives baseline. Montross is there. Bounced it inside. Layup missed. Whistle and the foul is called on Donald Williams by referee Jody Sylvester. Foul on Williams is his first. It's the fourth check at the fifth team foul against Carolina. And Cincinnati will get the ball out of bounds at the baseline with 5.08 left on the first half clock. Former Carolina star Michael Corrin, now a color commentator with the NBA's New Jersey Nets, will be here at halftime. Carolina, after a 5 of 15 start, has now hit its three of its last four. Cincinnati, a little trouble getting it in, but finally did so. Gibson in the midcourt area. Gets Rodel on him defensively. Now he comes back to the right, picks up his dribble, hands it off to Van Exel. The trap is there. He dribbled out of it, goes to the sideline. Now gets the ball to uh, Bostic. Now back out to Van Exel, and he drains another one. This is unbelievable. Van Exel now with six three-pointers in the first half. Down low, Montross, two-handed slam. And it's Mike Harris turning and complaining to Van Exel that he got no help. No weak side help on that defensive scheme for the Bearcats. 33 to 22. Van Exel across the timeline. Maybe it'll go just as quickly as it came back. That's the Tar Heels hope right now. Double team, Gibson got it to Martin. Lynch is the only guy there. He had two guys coming down the lane, didn't he? The one of them, Gibson from outside. No oh, good. Montross with the rebound. Stripped of the ball by Martin. Out of bounds. It'll belong to Carolina. Cincinnati would he 6 of 11 as a team from three-point range. And they all belong to Nick Van Exel. Third team, Associated Press, All-American, but shooting like a player of the year this afternoon against Carolina. 
Yeah, Van Exel has accounted for all the makes and all but two of the misses, so he's six of nine. 33 to 22. Phelps will get it across the timeline. Phelps, Rodel, Montross, Lynch, and Reese for the Tar Heels. Phelps against Van Exel. Moving to the right side. Picks up his dribble, now whips it to Lynch. Top of the circle, down low to Montross. Hit him, came off his shoulders. Recovered by Cincinnati's Terrence Gibson. Now to Nick Van Exel. Already 10 first-half turnovers by the Tar Heels, who are averaging only 15 a game. Cincinnati forces about 21 a contest. Moss Gibson now trying to dribble away. Hands it off to Gibson, who's caught in the double team. Away to Jacob. Now it goes baseline to Martin, and he travels coming out of the left corner. Big John Jacobs, a 6'7 freshman from Cincinnati, is in the lineup for the Bearcats. He's played only 17 games this year, but that might be an indication of how Carolina is starting to make Cincinnati have to go deeper to its bench than it wants to go. 3.38 to play first half. Timeout on the floor. The score, Carolina 22, Cincinnati 33. 38 remaining in the first half. The lead's been as many as 15. It is now 11 at 33 to 22. And don't miss out on the action when Carolina returns to Keenan Stadium in the fall. Assure yourself of priority notice when 93 Carolina football tickets come out and plan to be with us in Keenan Stadium. Just write or send a postcard to Carolina Fever List, P.O. Box 3000, Chapel Hill, 27515. We'll you a quick look at the shooting stats. Carolina 9 of 20, 45 percent. Bearcats 13 of 28, 46 percent. But from three-point range, the heels are 0 of 2, and the Bearcats are 6 out of 11. About the only chink, really, Nick, in the Carolina offensive armor, rather than the turnovers, has been the 0 for 4 effort by Brian Reese here in the first half. Other than that, and then dilute Van Exel's shooting a little bit, and, uh, you know, Carolina wouldn't be in such bad shape. But right now, the Tar Heels are down 11 and trying to fight back. High lob, and the Montross layup is good. They got it in between both Jacobs and Martin, and Montross has 10 in the first half on 5 of 6 shooting. Cincinnati trying to get the ball front court, 33 to 24. Here's Gibson on the drive, feeds it off to Martin. Reverse layup, no good. Tapped outside. Van Exel comes up with it, and he'll drive right back down the right end of the lane. Scooped it away to the breaking Jacobs. Missed it, knocked around. Loose ball, bounce high. Cincinnati down with it. Bostic, he tries to move, and Montross has been hit in the face. Cincinnati gets the dunk by Eric Martin on the left side, but they couldn't stop play until the play was finalized, and Montross got hammered right across the eyes I believe boy they were scrapping for it it was Bostic looping it down low to get the dunk by Eric Martin Montross got hammered right across the bridge of the nose and his eyes coach Smith is out talking to him and now coach or rather Mark Davis the Tar Heel trainer has come out and they're walking Montross back to the uh, bench and sitting him down and he's got his right eye closed at the moment and a very concerned Scott Montross has been restrained right down at the end of the aisle there by one of the ushers. He wanted to try to get a little closer look and see what was wrong with his son. Here's Salvadori. Down the sideline, it goes to Brian Reese. Reese driving into the lane. Lost the ball. Ball is loose. Lynch recovers and scores. Lynch picked it up off the floor and went right back up with it. 35 to 26. Van Exel through the center jump circle, picked up by Derek Phelps. Well, a couple of years ago, we saw an elbow to Montross really turn the Tar Heels on up the Carrier Dome in Syracuse against Eastern Michigan. Let's see what happens now. Nelson, turnaround shot off the front of the rim, no good. Salvadori tapped it away. It was lost on the floor, recovered, put up off the glass. No good, fell out into George Lynch's hands. He would have had it the first time, but not Salvadori, knocked it away. Phelps down on the right side. He'll come cross court to Donald Williams. Williams top of the circle, shooting on the move, and it's good. It's a two-pointer for Donald Williams, his second field goal of the afternoon. Williams is now two of six from the field. 35 to 28, and the ball is recovered in the backcourt by Lynch. He'll give it to Williams. He shoots the three. No good. Found it away. Lynch has got the rebound. Six back. It's good, and he gets fouled. Sphere in the Meadowlands. It has suddenly turned predominantly blue and white. And Eric Montross has notified Dean Smith with ice pack under, under his right eye that he's ready to go back in 
when needed. The Tar Heels making a concerted effort ever since that timeout of the seven-minute mark to get it inside to their big people. Lynch converts on the free throw, converting the three-point play. He's got 11. Carolina has made eight of its last 10 shots, and it's got a 15-point deficit down to four. Nelson backcourt hands it off to Van Exel. Across the timeline against Phelps. Working to the right side, turns, now will give it to Gibson, midcourt area, Reese on him, to Martin. They look low for Bostic, can't get him the ball in the corner. Tried to give it back to Martin, cut off by Salvadori, intercepted by Phelps, knocked down blood, and that's number three on the Morovia, California senior. And the guy who yesterday said playing Carolina tradition meant nothing to him. Well, 18 foul. I was caught by Scott Montross that time. Just a word about the officiating on the play with which Eric went down. It was properly officiated. Woody, as you pointed out, you cannot stop play for an injured player unless there is a, the opportunity to stop play. In other words, once the play comes to its natural end, then the whistles blow. Your heart goes out to Montross. As you can tell he was in a lot of pain, but the officials did it right. He has got an ice pack right underneath his right eye as Phelps goes to the line, and he could get Carolina within three with his first free throw, and it is good. 35 to 31. 126 to play. The Tar Heels were down 29-14 with seven minutes left in the half. 35-32. Phelps will have another free throw coming. That's his first point of the ball game. Second in steals this season to his teammate George Lynch. Next free throw is good. It is 35-33. Nelson to inbound the ball. Carolina is on a 19-6 run. Van Exel across the timeline, right side. Gives it up to Gibson with Williams on him defensively. Now to Nelson. Nelson wanted to make the pass to Bostic, couldn't do it. He screamed out at Bostic for not being in the right position. Van Exel for three, no good. He missed one. Salvadori with a rebound. Controls it after almost having it knocked away. Got it to Williams. Williams down on the right side, turns, spins away. Baseline, Van Exel stripped to the ball, and Van Exel whistle for the foul. That's number 10, and it will be two shots coming anyway for Donald Williams, and he can tie the score with 57.8 seconds remaining in the first half. It's so simple, it almost defies analysis, but the outside shots were not working at all for Carolina. So Coach Smith appeared to gather the ball club together and say, all right, look, outside shots are not falling in. That's okay. Let's concentrate on doing what it is that we do best, and that is playing tall, being big, and pounding it inside, getting on that foul line some, and it's, it's work. Williams gets his fifth point. If he gets his sixth point, this score will be tied in the final minute of play. Cincinnati has made only one of its last eight field goals, four but of its last 14, and I think that run is now 20 to 6. Williams' free throw is off the side of the rim, no good. Salvador had it, lost it, recovered by Gibson. Gibson gets it to Van Exel. There is about a 10-second differential in the shot clock, so another possession may be upcoming for Carolina. Calabria against Van Exel. Van Exel picks up his dribble, high post pass, almost lost. Nelson double team, and Lynch stripped him of the ball, and then, oh, it was Bostic, and Bostic reached in and fouled him, and that's number three on Bostic. And to say that the Bearcats have become a little bit rattled would be an understatement. Yeah, when the other team scores on you and, be, and keeps scoring, it's so tough not to let that affect your offense, but it's not that Cincinnati is kicking it around on their own. The Tar Heels have combined the inside emphasis of their offensive game with more pressure at the defensive end. And if you're concerned about Montross, he has his eyes open. He's holding an ice pack underneath his right eye, and he would be on the bench anyway in this situation because he's got two personal fouls. He wouldn't be in there at all for jeopardy of drawing his third as George Lynch goes to the free throw line. And he's, he's Lynch is three of four on the day. Free throw is good. High score, 35-35. Lynch will have another one coming. He has 12 first-half points. Montross with 10. And if Brian Reese comes back with a hot hand, oh, Gertie, have we got one for you. Next free throw is good. Carolina's team for, Mont uh, for Lynch. First lead for the Heels since it was 2 to nothing. Ball inbounded by Nelson to Van Exel. Shot clock is off. 33, 32, 31, 30 seconds. Van Exel to try to get Cincinnati the lead here before the break. Comes cross court to Durden. Durden bothered by Sullivan. Now on the dribbles. Across the top of the circle to the left. Outside it goes to 
Van Exel. Now it's down the sideline to Durden. Back out front to Van Exel. He's looking at that clock that shows him 15 seconds left. Van Exel. Jump pass over to Gibson. Carolina's got a foul to give here. Let's see if the Tar Heels take it before the break. To Gibson. Pushes it to Nelson. He takes the jump shot and it's good. With one second and there will go the horn ending the first half. So Nelson gets the jump shot. And for the ninth time this year, Carolina is behind at the intermission. But it's not what it once was. Once it was 15. Now it is only one at 37. Quickly as the crow flies make it's a long way to New Orleans, but by the clock, it's only about 20 minutes away. Van Exel shot 50%, 7 of 14 in the first half. The rest of the Bearcats, 8 of 22 for 36%. We start the final 20 minutes of play. Carolina in possession of the ball. They come out to try to trap Derek Phelps, who didn't take a shot offensively in the first half. Now up to Donald Williams. Hanging jump shot. Foul line. No good. Bounced around. They tap it. George Lynch had it. Couldn't hold it. Knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to Cincinnati. Bearcats have got a one-point lead. 37-36. Only the ninth time this year the Heels have trailed at the half. There were four and four in the previous eight games in which they faced a deficit at the intermission. Van Exel trapped in the backcourt by Lynch and Phelps throws over the top of the trap to Gibson on the right side. Donald Williams is on him. Now Lynch gets there on the trap. Gibson bounces it to Blunt. Now Blunt will come cross court to Van Exel. Van Exel trying to direct Eric Martin a little bit. Bounced it down to Martin. They looped it back out to Blunt. Lynch flies by him. He takes a short jump shot over the cross. No good. Phelps has got the rebound. Martin tried to stick a hand in. Phelps lost control of the dribble. Went to get it. Gets it across the timeline. Now to Williams. They take a quick look at Montross. Williams dribbles uh, left of the circle. Goes to Reese in the corner. Now to George Lynch. George Lynch stripped to the ball. Knocked away. Montross recovers. A lot of hands flying around to Williams. He loops it to Lynch. Baseline jump shot is no good. Rebounded by Gibson. Tar Heels have missed their first two shots of the second half. 37-36. Cincinnati still with the lead. 18.50 to play. And hopefully it's not in the season. Gibson passes it down the sideline to Blunt on the wing. He'll come back out front to Nelson. Loops it underneath to Martin. And Reese hammers him. That'll be personal number one on Brian Reese. First team foul against Carolina's second half. By the way, in the first half, Cincinnati whistled for 11 team fouls. Carolina five. Bearcats were 10 of 14, or one of two at the free throw line. Carolina 10 of 14. Eric Martin, four for seven in the first half, goes to the free throw line, where he is a 64% shooter on the year. Cincinnati as a team shoots that same percentage. Martin's free throw is good, and it's 38 to 36. He's had five double-doubles on the year, including three of the last four games for Bob Huggins' club. And he's been in double-figure scoring six games in a row, 21 on the year. That accounts for his 13.4 average. Next free throw is good. He now has 10, so he's in double figures once more, and it's 39-36. Lynch will inbound the ball to Phelps. He got a backcourt pick from Montross. Phelps across the timeline. The double team is coming to Montross. Dropped it to Lynch. Gives it to Reese. Right back to Montross for the slam dunk coming down the lane. Montross, 6 of 7 in the game, now has 12 points, and it's 39-38. to Carolina pulling within one. Across the timeline, Van Exel spinning, going down the left sideline. Phelps and Montross follow him. He got it to Blunt. Corey puts it to the floor, passes to Nelson. He'll push it off to Gibson. Williams moving out on him to Van Exel. Van Exel loses, dumps it down low to Blunt for the slam dunk. That's Blunt's first basket. He went 0 for 4 in the first half. And he has double-doubles in three of his last six games. Montross inbounds the ball to Williams. 41 to 38. He'll give it to Phelps across the timeline. Gets it to Brian Reese. Reese passes it to Lynch. Lynch up for the shot, and he got fouled by Terrence Gibson. Running by him and sticking a hand in. Gibson whistled for his first. First team foul of the second half against the black-shirted Bearcats. George Lynch to the free throw line. On Friday night, with his 14th double-double, he became Carolina's second all-time leading rebounder, passing up a pretty good one named Billy Cunningham. He has 1,063 for his career. Only Sam Perkins is in front of him. Free throw by Lynch is good. He's now 6 of 7 at the line. 14 points on the afternoon. 41 to 39. He'll try to pull Carolina within one. I got this feeling that how Carolina shoots second half free throws may determine whether they go south or not. Next free throw is good, and it's 41 to 40. Nelson will inbound the ball to Blunt. Carolina with backcourt pressure. Now it's in Van Exel's hands. 
The Bearcat All-America works against Phelps. Spins, comes back to his left, now back to his right. Off the dribble, he'll give it up to Gibson. Now Cincinnati spreads its offense out a bit. Now to Nelson. Nelson knocking Lynch off of him. Tried to get it to Blunt. Did Blunt tried to loop it back. Knocked away Lynch. Recovered by Williams. He'll give it to George Lynch on the drive. The layup is no good. Didn't get it up over the top of the rim. Blunt trailing, got the rebound. Off the van, actually comes front court. Carolina could have retaken the lead. Here's Blunt, whipping it in the corner to Gibson. He's left open for three, and it's good. Terrence Gibson drains the first three-pointer that somebody other than Van Exel has made for Cincinnati. 44 to 40. The Bearcats are 7 of 13 in three-pointers. Donald Williams trapped along the sideline, and a timeout called by Carolina. Dean Smith going up to argue with Art McDonald that he was forced out of bounds. But anyway, Carolina has to use one of those precious timeouts that the Tar Heels like to save for stretch runs. They'll have two left. A real unpleasant exchange a moment ago when Carolina's George Lynch had the ball on the break. Van Exel bothered him, and Lynch did not get enough juice on the layup to get it in. Cincinnati got the defensive rebound and came right back, and then Terrence Gibson nailed a three. So it's 44 to 40, and Gibson can score. He had 25 against New Mexico State in UC's second round victory. He has had, as a matter of fact, Mick, two of his last three games have been double-figure performances, but he won only three of ten against Virginia on Friday night. That's after going 10 of 13 against New Mexico State for those 25 points you talked about. Carolina's ball, the heels are down four, 44 to 40. Rodel coming to the left, looking inside. They play off of him, and he banks it in off the glass. First shot of the game for Henry. Pulls Carolina within two at 44 to 42. In the backcourt, Phelps picking up Van Exel. Van Exel not yet across the timeline, turning to his left, now gets it to Blunt. He'll go back to Gibson. Rodel is on him defensively. He moves away to the right on the dribble, bounces it to Bostic. Bostic looking for some help, and we get a whistle and a foul called on Rodel of Carolina, I believe. Yes, Rodel for the hole. It's his first, second team foul against Carolina here in the second half. The Cincinnati's ball out of bounds with 16-29 left to play. Bearcats lead the Tar Heels 44-42. They've met four previous times. The last time was 1979 in Greensboro, and Carolina has won all four of the previous meetings, and Cincinnati is forced to take a timeout. So the Bearcats, as Carolina denies the inbounds, has to burn a timeout. And we're not quite four minutes into the second half, and we've got a Donnybrook going at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Right before that timeout, Woody was telling you about the series between Carolina and UC, and it is four games old, but the games have been competitive. In fact, Carolina's won all four by a combined total of 12 points. A good indication of the intensity defensively that both teams have brought to the second half is in the fact that both ball clubs have now had to spend a precious timeout caught in traps. In the second half, the Tar Heels are 2 of 5. The Bearcats are 2 of 3, 1 of 1 from three-point range. And the replay on the giant screens, the video screens here in the Meadowlands during that break a moment ago when Carolina's Donald Williams took a timeout certainly didn't make umpire Art McDonald look very good. Coach Smith pleading that he was forced out of bounds and the replays on the giant video screens would seem to have upheld that protest. But nevertheless, it was still a Carolina timeout. No foul on the play. Cincinnati controlling the ball. It's Bostic in the right-hand corner to Blunt, lobbing it inside to Martin, and they throw it away. Second turnover of the half for Cincinnati, and that is 13 for the game. The Bearcats were averaging just 14 a contest coming in here. 44-42. Phelps getting it across the timeline against the 2-2-1 zone press. Bounces it Lynch. Down low to Montross. Caught it. Puts up the shot. No good. And the foul is on Martin. And that's his second. Eric Martin commits the second team foul of the final 20 minutes against the Bearcats. For the Bearcats. Uh, I've been impressed with how the Heels have handled this Cincinnati pressure. The Bearcats study carefully which hand you favor to, to dribble with. In other words, a left-handed point guard will most of the time want to bring the ball up the left side, the right-hander to the right side. So Cincinnati does a good job of anticipating where you're going to be trying to attack and then bringing the traps over at that spot. The 39th player in Carolina basketball history to score 1,000 points. Montross has got his 13th point of the day, looking for number 14, and it's good. He got the bounce, and it's tied at 44. For Eric Montross, two for four at the line today. Carolina with pressure. Gibson on the drive, down on the right, put it up, and it's no good. 
knocked away, recovered inside. They battled for it, hooked up, no good, and they're going to call a foul, I think, on Montross or Riddle. Both were there. I'll wait on Ted Valentine, and it's on Montross, and that is number three. Third team foul against Carolina. It comes with 15.58 left to play in the ball game. He has 106 fouls on the year. Just six off his total of a year ago. But not quite as many uh, per game on the average because of the 36 games that Carolina has played. He has been disqualified. Montross has only three times this year. Free throw is good by Corey Blunt. Along with Eric Martin, he came out of Rancho Santiago Junior College to play for the Bearcats. Four of the five starters in today's game are products of junior college basketball. 45 to 44. Blunt on his next free throw, and it's good as well. Blunt was a consensus Juco All-American. Made them both, and it's 46-44. Brian Reese on the drive to the basket. Hanging in the air, he gets his first field goal. There he is. Brian Reese now one of five, four points, and it's tied again at 46. Dario Bench thought that Reese was undercut on that left baseline drive. Looping pass to Bostic left wing against Reese. Back out front it comes now to Martin. He'll push it away to Gibson. Down low to Bostic. Tried to go underneath. Lynch knocks it away. Then goes down to time up. Possession error favors Cincinnati. Carolina, you will recall, inbound of the ball at the start of the second half. Bob Huggins, 39-year-old head coach of the Bearcats in his fourth year, trying to get to the Final Four for a second straight year, yelling at his team with the offensive inbounds play. Gibson will inbound it from underneath the Bearcat goal. Everybody scatters. High lob into Blunt for the dunk. Corey Blunt. Now with six, all in the second half, and it's 48-46. to 46. Cincinnati. Bounce down to Williams. Montross was open briefly. Pass to Lynch. Knocked away. Stolen by Van Exel. Down he goes against Phelps. Hanging in the air. Off the glass. No good. Lynch had a hand on the rebound. Knocked away from him. It will belong to Carolina. 48-46. Cincinnati with the lead. Both teams. One turning it over. Carolina. Cincinnati failing to get the shot to go down. Montross down the sideline to Reese. He'll give it to Lynch coming down the middle and a block called on Cincinnati. Nelson, or rather Corey Blunt, still apparently moving, and Mick, that is number four on the Monrovia, California senior. Check it. They call it on Bostic rather than Blunt. That is his fourth. So take your pick. It's still number four with 15.01 to play and. Carolina will get it out of the baseline on the third team foul. Blunt's more important to him, I think, than Boston. Phelps inbounds it to Lynch, to Montross, now to Williams. Takes the jump shot. Good! Just inside the arc for two. Donald Williams' third field goal, and it's 48-48. 14-45 left to play at the Meadowlands. The winner goes to New Orleans to play Kansas next Saturday. Blunt, high post. Back it goes to Martin. Lynch moving out on him, comes cross court to Nelson. He gives it to Van Exel. Van Exel working against Phelps along the left sideline. Now to Gibson up high. Will go right side to Blunt inside. The Van Exel tried to push the pass away, and they're going to call a foul on who? Jody Sylvester. Lynch, and it is going to be on George Lynch, and that is number two on the Roanoke Senior. Boy, I'll tell you, if it's whistled and Montross is in the vicinity, I hold my breath until I'm sure. Yeah, me too. He's got three right now. Van Exel was down to make the inbounds play. Now he'll be replaced by Terrence Gibson, who's playing in his 121st career game today for the Bearcats. Martin out front to Van Exel. High lob to Martin for the slam dunk. They pulled off the alley-oop a couple of times behind the Carolina defense, and that's 12 points stolen by Gibson. Stolen right back by Phelps. He tried to go to Van Exel in the corner. Great anticipation on the part of Phelps. Phelps spinning away from the Montrose pick midcourt area to Brian Reese. Reese will give it to Donald Williams. Back to the middle he comes, shooting on the move. No good, the ball bounds high. Phelps with a rebound, knocked away out of bounds. It'll belong to Carolina. Uh, what anticipation by Derek Phelps to read Van Exel and pilfer that ball right back just as Van Exel had knifed in to steal it. Salvadori is coming in. Lynch is going to get a break. Reese will also sit down as Sullivan comes in. Salvadori will be the guy to inbound as we got some pushing and shoving underneath and Ted Valentine comes between Eric Martin and Derek Phelps. 
McDonald stepping in underneath between the two. They're talking about positioning underneath on the inbound. Ted Valentine will hand Salvador the ball and it looks like he's going to watch it closely. Salvador inbounds to Sullivan. Back out front it goes to Phelps. Fake the pass left side to Williams. Now he give it to Sullivan. Nelson's on him defensively out front to Williams. Now comes back to Phelps. Phelps will push it to Sullivan. Jump shot from the baseline. No good. An air ball went right over the top of the rim. 50 to 48 Cincinnati. Down in the corner it goes to Dirt. Back up the sideline to Van Exel. He calls out the play. Now gives it to Durden on the right. Bounces it to Martin against Sullivan. Sullivan's all up in his face. Knocked away out of bounds. It'll be Cincinnati's ball. Eric Martin just staring right at Ted Valentine, thinking there should have been a foul called on the play. And that's not the way to win friends and influence people if they're wearing black and white striped shirts. Lynch is in. Montross is going out. We pause quickly. Ten seconds. Station identification on the Tar Heel Sports Network. WZZU, Burlington, Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. The Classic Rock Station, 93.9 ZZU. Rejoining at the Meadowlands, Carolina swats the ball away on the inbounds play, but Salvadori has whistled for the foul, knocking a Cincinnati player down, and that will be number one on the Pittsburgh junior. Fifth team foul against Carolina. Three have been whistled on the Bearcats. Well, now the Cincinnati coaching staff, the action is right in front of the Cincinnati bench protesting some of the movement as they stack for the inbounds play. Nelson's got to get rid of it, did to Blunt. He's trapped in the corner, back up the sideline to Van Exel. Van Exel spinning away, almost knocked away. He recovered. Phelps is on. We got a whistle and a foul on Blunt. It's his fourth. Corey Blunt against Salvadori off the ball using the elbow. So, Curtis Bostic and Corey Blunt both have four for the Bearcats. With 13.26 to play, and that's the fourth Cincinnati turnover as well as the fourth team foul. The problem there is that both Bostic and Blunt are valuable to Cincinnati to defend the pivot, and so with Blunt going out, they had to bring Bostic off the bench to replace him. Phelps out in the midcourt area against Van Axel. Carolina down by two with the ball. Phelps picks up his dribble. Sullivan breaking free out left, takes the pass against Martin. Now he'll put it to the floor, moving toward the baseline. Got to get rid of it, almost trapped, got it to Salvador. Caught it, stripped for the ball. Van Exel came from behind to take it away as Salvador was holding it up. Third Carolina turnover the half. Van Exel against Phelps. Stop, pops with the left hand, it's good for two. Van Exel with a left-handed jump shot. That's only the second two-pointer he's made today, and he's got 23. Phelps over to Williams. From behind the arc, now he drives, hanging off the glass, good. Donald Williams banks it in off the glass, coming in from the left corner. He's got nine, and it's 52-50. 12.40 to play. Durden bounces it to Nelson across the timeline, picks up his dribble now. Lynch is on him defensively, bounced it to Van Exel. Phelps trying to get in front of him. Van Exel, a jump pass to Bostic, now back out to Durden. Durden's jumper, an air ball, caught by Sullivan, standing right underneath the net. It just did flick the net as it fell short. Carolina with another chance to tie. The Tar Heels have led briefly on two occasions. Trailed by one at the half. Phelps bounces it to Salvadori. High post. Gives it to Donald Williams in the corner against Dirt. Baseline. Loops it back. Salvadori. Jump hook in the lane is no good. Knocked outside. Recovered Sullivan. He takes it back. Put it up. No good. Knocked away. Lynch recovers and gets the stick back. What an effort on the part of George Lynch for his 17th point of the afternoon. And the game is tied at 52. Sullivan and Salvadori also fighting hard to keep the ball alive off the glass. Van Exel against Phelps on the dribble drive. Feeds Martin. Jump shot is good. Eric Martin puts Cincinnati back in front with his 14th point of the afternoon. Williams shooting on the move. Off the front of the rim. Rimmed out. Martin with a rebound for Cincinnati. 11 and a half minutes to play. The Bearcats lead by two over the Tar Heels. And have got the basketball. Van Exel picked up by Phelps in the center jump circle. Started the other way, knocked down, maintained his dribble, gets up, drives to the middle, all the way down the middle, and we got a whistle, and they're going to call Phelps from behind. For the reach in, his second, sixth team foul against Carolina. Derek was being so careful not to foul Van Exel. When he tripped down, Phelps saw an opportunity and was going to try to steal the ball away, but then as Van Exel recovered, Phelps recovered also, thought better of the gamble, and then... He's upset with himself for bumping him from behind. Well, Phelps has gone down pit road right now. He's on the bench. 
and he's been replaced as Dean Smith continuing to rotate players so he can come back, give him a chance to get a breather, and then come back with him fresh. Derek Phelps is taking on tires and gasoline on the Tar Heel bench. Inbounded to Gregor, almost knocked away, recovered, underhanded it to Bostic, got it out front to Gibson. Terrence Gibson off the dribble, will give it to Nelson, comes back out front to Gregor. Gregor against Brian Reese, looking for help, goes across the top of the defense to Gibson. He shoots the three and it's good. Terrence Gibson's second three-pointer of the half. 57-52, it's a five-point Cincinnati lead. The Tar Heels can't afford to dig themselves another hole to try to crawl out of. Much deeper than about maybe four or five or six points. Here's Williams shooting for three. Yes! First one of the afternoon for Donald Williams. First one of the afternoon for the Tar Heels. 57-55. Durden out front against the Tar Heel zone, which gets back. Now it goes man-to-man. -man. It was a zone press. It dropped back into the man-to-man -man half court. Gregor. Oh, he almost walked with it. Maintained his pivot. Put to Nelson. Back to Gregor. Block from behind. Whistle. Foul is on Gregor, or is it on Bostic? If it's on Bostic, that'll be all she wrote. It's on Bostic. He's done. Curtis Bostic has fouled out of only his second game of the season. And he will leave with one field goal on three attempts for two points. He was in the starting lineup for Cincinnati until six games ago. That's how valuable he is. They bring Martin back off the bench to replace him. They can't afford to run Blunt back out there. But this is going to force Cincinnati into playing small. 6-6, six, 6-6, six, 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 and 6-5, six, I believe, across that front line. And Blood's in danger of fouling out of his fourth game of the year. For Carolina, Montross with three, Lynch with two, Phelps with two. Williams on the right side. In the corner to Lynch, back out front to Phelps. 57-50, and he to Lynch for the slam dunk, and we've got a tie game. Well, that's like getting shot with your own gun, Cincinnati. Gibson trying to get it across the timeline against Williams. They give Gibson more of the ball handling duties now. Gibson on the drive. Knocked away. Felt picked up Reese. Here comes Reese down against Van Exel. On the drive. Put it up. Blocked away. Gregor. Van Exel comes up with it. What a block by Gregor. Van Exel by Lynch. On the drive. Stop. Pop. Misses it badly. Knocked away. Recovered Martin into the right corner. He goes to Gibson. He shoots a three. No good. Rebounded Lynch. Whistle, no, no whistle. He got double teamed. I thought for a moment I heard a whistle. That's the Phelps. 57-57, 9.25 to play. What a game. They're going to spread it out some, use that open court to try to create opportunities both inside and on the wings. Derek Phelps, one step inside the center jump circle. Will now give it to Reese on the right wing. He holds it high against Nelson. Brings it top of the circle, picks up his dribble inside to Lynch. Knocked away. Lynch goes right back to the basket. No good. Falls into Eric Martin's hand. Lynch reaching in for the ball. He can't get it. Gibson, now he'll give it to Van Exel. Van Exel will bring it front court. They're taking turns, bringing it ball front court, but Derek Phelps is guarding whoever's got the ball. Now to Gregor. Now to Nelson. Puts it over to Gibson in the left corner against Donald Williams. Now he'll give it to Van Exel. Van Exel swings back out to the top, goes by a Nelson pick, back to the left side. Feeds Gibson, he shoots for three from the corner, rimmed out. Montross had the rebound, lost it. It went out of bounds off Martin. It'll belong to Carolina, and Bob Huggins leaked in the air at the Cincinnati bench in dismay that he didn't get the call. Uh, George Lynch has got to be pooped because he has been everywhere scrapping for loose balls and playing defense. Well, Lynch is now coming to the bench to get a breather. Salvador is in. You have to take him out to rest, but it's almost one of those situations where you want to say from the bench, George, you're not tired. You are not tired, George. Phelps works across the timeline, left side. Score tied at 57. Cincinnati dropping back. It goes to Reese on the wing, knocked away Gregor. Still Carolina's ball right into the Carolina bench area. Coach Smith picked it up on the bounce, gave it back to Art McDonald, but took the opportunity to say something to him as he did. Rodel will inbound, got it to Salvadori. Now it's right back in Rodel's hand. Comes down to Phelps. Williams is also on the bench trying to get a blow right now. Montross back out front to Phelps. Score tied 57. 8.05 to play. Rodel down low to Reese. Baseline knocked away. Reese recovers. Up for the shot. Tied up. And it will belong to Carolina on alternating possession. 
Carolina's ball underneath its own goal with 8.01 to go, and the score tied at 57. Williams is back in, and Rodel sits down. Phelps will now go to the baseline to make the inbounds pass rather than Salvadori. Carolina changing the call. Phelps gets it into Reese in the lane. Fingertip roll is good, and Carolina leads. 59 to 57. Just under eight minutes to play. Whatever you do, wherever you go, do it and go there right now. Gregor, left sideline. Smart. Now inside to Gregor. Layup miss. Salvadori blocks it, comes down with it. Whistle foul is on Eric Martin. It's his third. What a big rebound on the missed shot by Gregor. Reese is flashing the tired signal to the Carolina bench. Bill Guthridge tells Dean Smith he searches the bench and asks for Pat Sullivan. Now we got a timeout on the floor. Timeout, 7.36 to play. Don't go anywhere, we aren't. Carolina 59, Cincinnati 57. The Tar Heels have the lead at 59 to 57. And this half, Carolina is shooting 9 of 20. 45%. The Bearcats are 7 of 16, 44%. And the turnover margin has started to swing back the other way. After the Tar Heels were turnover prone in the first half, the Bearcats have been forced into six second half turnovers. Carolina's turned it over three times this half. And most people are familiar with the NCAA through its basketball tournaments, but the quest for national titles is not limited to March Madness. During this academic year, the NCAA will administer 79 championships in 21 sports. And that is a message from the NCAA. Eric Montross calling the attention of umpire Art McDonald that there's some ice out in the lane at the Tar Heel defensive end of the floor, and they get that cleaned up. Cincinnati will apply pressure. Carolina will inbound. Holding the lead, 59-57. 7.30 left to play in the ballgame. Salvadori goes to Montross. Out front on the right. Double team whistle, and they call the foul on Montross. Art McDonald whistles the fourth personal foul on Eric Montross as he gets double team and tries to fight out of the double team. Seventh team foul, Carolina, but a player control foul, so no shots coming. Game rebounds are 26-22 to this point in favor of Cincinnati. Nick Van Exel against Derek Phelps in the backcourt on this parquet floor at the Meadowlands. Van Exel across the timeline, lost control of the dribble, goes back to maintain it. Now wants to get it to Nelson. He's in trouble, bounced it finally to Gregor. Sal uh, Sullivan is on him, fights to the baseline. Double team there, bounced it back around the double team to Nelson. Goes baseline to Martin, jumper over Montross is no good. Salvadori with a rebound. Got it to Donald Williams. 6.55 left to play in the ball game. Right now as Phelps walks it through the center jump circle and Carolina goes to a 1-4 set. Williams on the right wing. Williams coming to the middle. Looking inside, we'll go to Sullivan, deep in the left corner. He'll come back up the sideline to Williams. He'll push it out front to Phelps. Phelps on the penetrating drive, hanging, puts up the shot. No good. Salvadori with a rebound, sticks it back on the jump hook. His first field goal of the day, and Carolina's got its biggest lead, 61-57. That middle is so crowded with Cincinnati sagging 2-3 zone. They're making it hard for Montross to get free. Van Exel across the timeline. He works back to the middle. Goes in the corner now to Gibson. Williams on him like flypaper. Out front to Nelson. Down low to Martin. He almost lost it. Recovered. Trying to fight in on Montross. Bounce the ball to Gregor. And Gregor got fouled by Williams. Gregor gets the layup. 61-59. And he'll also go to the free throw line where he's a 65% shooter. And Donald Williams gets charged with his second personal foul. It's the 18th foul. Cincinnati has only four. And isn't it interesting how that foul situation has changed dramatically in the second half? Uh, it sure has. But Gregor got the ball, though, because one of the Cincinnati guards, I believe it was Van Exel, was able to penetrate and break down Carolina's defense. Missed free throw by Gregor, rebounded by Lynch because of the nice screen down low set by Montross to block out the Bearcats. Lynch will give it to Reese. Lynch and Reese both now back in the lineup, so this is the Carolina starting five in there right now. Reese along the left sideline, into the corner, back up the sideline to Phelps. Now the call goes out for four corners. Phelps will back up outside. Van Exel comes out to get it. Cincinnati's hanging back. Coach Smith wants Cincinnati to have to come out and match up. 
Now he tells Derek Phelps to go ahead and penetrate. Gets it to Brian Reese on the left side. Whistle and an offensive foul on Brian Reese. This time called by Ted Valentine. Reese's foul is his second, ninth team foul. Player control, no free throw. 37 to play. That turnover is the fifth of the half for Carolina. The 14th of the game. Check it, the 15th of the game. So Cincinnati's got yet another chance to tie or maybe even take the lead. Van Exel across the timeline with five and a half minutes to go. Van Exel on the baseline drive. Stop. Double clutches the shot that misfires. Rebounded by Nelson out front to Gibson. Lynch flies by it. Gibson takes the shot. It's good. And Cincinnati leads. 62-61 on Gibson's third three-pointer of the second half. Van Exel has only one field goal after scoring 21 in the first half. Front court is felt. Gets it to Williams in the corner. Down low to Lynch. Puts it to Montross. He misses the dunk. Pull the basket down, but he'll go to the line, and there's a foul on Cincinnati. And it has been called on Terrence Gibson. It'll be his second, fifth team foul, Cincinnati. Montross will go to the line, upset that he missed that dunk. You know, sports play a big role in college living and at Granville Towers. Granville's athletic facilities include a full-court basketball court, swimming pool, and fully equipped Nautilus room. And when the heels are in action like they are today, residents can watch on one of Granville's big screen TVs. When choosing a place to live at Carolina, remember Granville Towers. Your rent never increases. Free throw is no good by Mondros. He'll have another one coming. This one will tie the game at 62 if he makes it. Cincinnati switches along the front line. Bearcats have got their hands up on the left. Montross ready on the next one to tie at 62. Free throw, good. Tie ball game, Montross with 15. Five minutes to play. That's how long it takes to get to New Orleans. Five minutes. Van Exel, left side. Carolina drops back, comes to Gibson. Ruddle's back in the ball game now. High post pass to March. He turns, looked inside. Now we'll push it to Gibson. Goes to Nelson. Tried to get it back. Knocked away Lynch. They go to the sideline. Lynch fell into the Cincinnati bench. It belongs to the Bearcats. Lynch couldn't save it. He may have jammed his pinky finger on his left hand. He's pulling at it right now. 440 left to play in the ball game. Nelson inbounding to Van Exel. Nelson gets it right back. Comes around Lynch. The double team is there. Pushes it to March. Moves baseline. Puts up the shot. No good. Knocked outside by Lynch, ball loose on the floor, saved to Van Exel. He fires the three, no good, knocked away by Ruddle, lost out of bounds off Gregor's hand, Carolina ball. Here comes Donald Williams back in for offense. Each side with two timeouts remaining as we go to the final four and a half minutes. Man, this is, this is settling into one of those, whoever has it last, goes. Score tied 62. Derek Phelps against Van Exel. Gets it to Lynch, still in the backcourt. George just now across the timeline. He'll push it away to Williams. Williams fake the pass down the sideline. Will come back on the right to Phelps. Cincinnati man-to-man -man out front, but they continue to sag back in the middle. It's a 2-3 Cincinnati matchup zone. Phelps from Williams, midcourt area. Tar Heels also trying to burn some clock, but get something productive at the end of the possession. Now Phelps with a penetrating call will feed Donald Williams on the left side. Williams comes to the top, bounces it back to Reese. He'll go to Phelps. Phelps looking inside for Montross. Gets it over to Williams. Williams to the baseline. Jump shot. Good! 64-62. Donald Williams with 14. Van Exel will get it front court. The bench is up. Hands up. The crowd is coming to its feet. Even the Cincinnati fans. Carolina's in the point zone. Van Exel, left side. Gets it to Martin in the corner, gets it right back on the wing. Now high post to Blunt, who's back in with four. Goes to Nelson, now to Gibson. Gibson running Williams into the pick, will take the shot, top of the circle, no good. Knocked into the corner, out of bounds. Went out, went out off Cincinnati, Carolina's ball. Nelson went over there to try to protect Lynch from getting it, and the darn ball bounced off his leg. Timeout here at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford. Seven to play, Carolina 64, Cincinnati 62. Situation, 3.07 remaining. That timeout was an official timeout, so both teams have two left. The possession arrow now favors Cincinnati, and the Bearcats are employing zone principles defensively right now, trying to keep 
at least two guys around Montross. Blunt is in the game, and he is fronting Eric Montross, or he was before that last timeout, in one of the scrappiest, most hotly contested, most physical games that I've seen in person in a long time. Carolina shooting 24 of 48 for the game, right at 50%, one of five from three. Carolina, Bear, Carolina will have it out of bounds, Mick. Excuse me, the Bearcats are 24 of 59, 41%, nine of 20 from three-point range, 45%. Ted Valentine hands Brian Reese the ball. He gets it into George Lynch. Now right back it goes to Reese. Phelps wants it in the backcourt. Not real heavy pressure. Cincinnati will come half court now. And let's see what Cincinnati's doing here. Do they go to the zone? Or are they going to go man to man? Well, they're still back in a 1 1 3. They're showing 1 1 3 now with Corey Blunt right down underneath the basket. Van Exel's out at about the foul line. Gibson's out high. Carolina with a two point lead in the basketball. Williams to Phelps, and we've got 2.40 left to play here in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Williams comes off the left wing right in front of the Tario bench to. Phelps bounces it to Lynch, gets it right back. Goes out front. Donald Williams for a three. Off the rim, no good. Lynch with a rebound. Stick back. No good. Fell off the front of the rim. Knocked outside. Reese runs it down. New 45-second shot clock. 2.20 to go. 64-62. What a big rebound that was. There have been several by the heels in this half. Reese comes over to Lynch. He'll give it to Phelps now right side. 64-62. Now gives it to Lynch. Lynch moves down in the left corner. He'll come back up the sideline to Phelps. Out in the midcourt area now to Williams. One dribble, then he'll give it to Reese. Martin playing off of him. Goes across the top of the defense to Phelps. They're looking for Montross. He comes out high. Now push it back to Williams. Shot clock is at 15. Game clock, 153. Reese goes across the top of Van Exel to Phelps. Shot clock is at 10. Here comes the penetration play. They get it to Reese. Reese knifes to the baseline, and a push called on Martin. That's only the sixth foul, though, against Cincinnati. Wait a minute. No, I failed to charge some, so it is the eighth foul. And so Reese will go to the free throw line on Martin's fourth personal foul. So Eric Martin, who's vitally important to Cincinnati, and Corey Blunt continue to play with four personals. Brian Reese at the free throw line, two of two on the day. Very deliberate free throw shooter. Arches it up. Good. 65 to 62. Seven points now for the Bronx Junior. He looked very relaxed. His mom is here today watching the youngest of her 10 children try to salt it away. Reese ready on the next one. And there's a lane violation by Cincinnati, but it was good anyway. Cincinnati had stepped into the lane. It's 66-62, 1.43. Both contingent of fans on their feet at the Meadowlands. Van Exel against Rodel, right side. Bounces at high post, Nelson. Salvadori backing off. Nelson one dribble, Van Exel. Van Exel leaning in, takes the shot, no good. They battle for it, and Reese went over Martins back inside. Foul on Brian Reese, his third, all of which had come in the second half. And Eric Martin, a 64% free throw shooter, will go to the line, 126 to play, and his team down four. Most teams lack the quickness to play a, a zone-type defense against Carolina and prevent that ball from being rotated inside. As Carolina reverses the basketball, changing sides of the court with it quickly. But Cincinnati's defense, or their quickness rather, I think benefits them on defense more so even than offense. It's more noticeable when they have the ball but defensively, they recover quickly. Martin's free throw, he got the bounce. Cincinnati, six of eight at the line, including three by Eric Martin, who's got 15. He'll have another shot coming, trying to get the Bearcats within two. 126 to play. Martin's next free throw is good. 66-64. Carolina's ball out of bounds against full court pressure. They get it to Williams. He drops it to Phelps. Coming across the timeline, he'll circle back out front. The trap is coming. They loop it cross court to Williams. They give it to Brian Reese down in the right corner. Brian will come up the sideline against Terry Nelson. Out into the midcourt area. He'll push it away to Williams now. Coach Smith up with a call off the Carolina bench. Derek Phelps indicates it's four corners. Carolina spreads it out with 105 to play. 25 seconds on the shot clock. 66-64, Carolina by two. Now to Brian Reese. Well out on the left. Now it comes back to Williams as the shot clock is at 15 seconds. And running down. Cincinnati content to stay back. He underhands it to Phelps. Phelps double team starts toward the middle. Almost lost it. Got to get rid of it. 
Finally forced it up, and it's knocked away. Recovered Montross. Stripped of the ball. Calling for it is Gibson. On the way for a layup that ties the score. 66-66. Terrence Gibson scores his 10th point of the half. We're in the final 30 seconds. Four quarters, Carolina. Two timeouts left, but no signal that the Tar Heels want a timeout. Derek Phelps in the center jump circle. 17, 16, 15. Gets it away to Reese on the left. Right back it comes to Phelps. He looks at the clock. Now back to Reese. Reese to the middle. Eight, seven, six. Brian Reese spinning away. Dumps it down low. Ledge off the baseline. Back it off. It, it fell out. Knocked out of bounds. Clock stops. Eight tenths of a second left. Carolina's ball. Now, a timeout has been called by Carolina. So with timeout. <laughs> well, that George Lynch shot with about a second and a half remaining looked like it was going to spin in, and it just rolled out the front of the rim. So Carolina will have the ball underneath their own basket. The clock will not start until there is inbounds touching, and you got to watch for two things here if you're Cincinnati. A lob in the middle or a screen that Carolina might set to try to free Donna Williams for a jump shot. Art McDonald will hand Derek Phelps the ball at the baseline, just to the left of the Tar Heel basket. Actually, my right as I look at it, but offensively, and a timeout called by Cincinnati, but let's stay right here. Eight tenths of a second left to play in this basketball game. Cincinnati managed to tie it, coming up with a loose ball on a scramble in the middle after a missed shot, and then throwing it the length of the floor to Terrence Gibson, Nick, who has scored 13 points, including 11 here in the second half to tie the score. Carolina, as we have become so accustomed to seeing with Dean Smith teams, did not use one of its allotted timeouts right there, preferring to go ahead and get the ball front court and try to make something happen. Absolutely, and, and the Tar Heels, they're not thinking about it right now, but when they review the tape of this, win or lose, that one possession that they had up to where Derek Phelps got caught with his dribble picked up just right of the circle and had to force up a shot. That shot was blocked, and then Cincinnati got the ball. And not only did they get the ball, but they threw it over the top of Carolina for a, an easy layup at the other end to tie the game. Eight-tenths of a second remaining. Each side has one timeout remaining. If you're Carolina right now, you're thinking, obviously, it's either going to be a Tar Heel win or it's going to be overtime. So you'd, you'd a heck of a lot rather beat Carolina than you would be Cincinnati right now. I'm not sure how much the Bearcats were able to learn from watching the Tar Heels align themselves offensively by calling that timeout because the Heels really hadn't quite taken up their offensive positions yet when Huggins signaled for the timeout. Neither team played an extra period during the regular season. Dean Smith really urgently asking Montross to come over to the bench to say something to him. When he left the bench Friday night, he told him to act as if he was going to catch a pass. That's when Carolina had that big backdoor layup on the Lynch to Williams pass. Phelps will inbound off the baseline against Eric Martin. Carolina is stacked right of the lane with three players. Donald Williams is in the left corner. Watching him is Nick Van Exel. Phelps does not yet have the ball. Remember, the clock will not start until the ball is touched inbounds. Cincinnati 66, Carolina 66. And if Derek this is the kind of situation that memories are made of. Oh, no doubt. And if Derek doesn't see something that looks good to him, he can call a timeout and reset things. He can indeed. So Phelps will inbound the ball as the players wait to resume action. Art McDonald on the spot. He reminds him, gets it to Derek Phelps. Phelps high lob into Brian Reese, down, up, oh, he missed the dunk, he missed the dunk, he missed a dunk, and we go to overtime. The play was perfect, he misses the dunk, and there will be overtime right after these 90 seconds, 90 seconds of commercial messages from the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey, where each team goes to overtime for the first time this year with a score, Carolina 66, Cincinnati 66. Well, Brian Reese missed that dunk as 
Christ, the horn was sounding. There is a there is a question, and you could raise it, and we will do so. Would it have counted? Would it have counted had he made it? Well, it appeared the red light on the video replays here in the Meadowlands that the light had come on with the ball still not up to the rim. I don't think it would have counted. Half controlled by Cincinnati. We're tied at 66 overtime. Each team gets an additional timeout, which means that each side has got two. Van Exel, midcourt area for the Bearcats. Possession error will now favor Carolina after Cincinnati controlled the tap to start the extra five minutes. Gibson high post to Nelson. He'll feed it to Torrey Blunt. Back outside, it comes down to Van Exel on the right side. Now gets Donald Williams. He'll run him by a pick set by Van Exel at the top. Nelson at the top. They bounce to Gibson. Now to Blunt. Turnaround shot is good. Off the baseline. Corey Blunt's third field goal of the day is eight point, 68-66. Donald Williams feeds to George Lynch, to Derek Phelps. Phelps back out front to Williams. Williams will push it right back to Phelps. He gives it baseline to Reese. Underneath to Lynch. Layup is good. Tied at 68. Good pass. Lynch now with 21 points. 4.09 left to play as Cincinnati brings the ball front court on the parquet playing floor here at the Meadowlands. Across the timeline, Van Exel on the right side. High post pass to Nelson. Nelson turns, Montross well off of him. Montross playing with four, so is Corey Blunt. And so is Eric Martin, who handles the ball right now. Works inside, lost it, loose ball. Gets it back outside to Gibson. Off to Van Exel, faking Williams on the drive. He stops, pops, no good. Nelson with the rebound, stripped to the ball. He recovered, went out of bounds off Montross. Went out of bounds off Montross, although Montross thought it was off of Nelson. It'll be Cincinnati ball underneath its own basket, 340 to play. Terrence Gibson will inbound for the black-shirted Bearcats. Gets it left wing to Martin. Out front it comes now to Van Exel. Van Exel driving right side, leaning in. Got the pass that went out of bounds. He caught Martin breaking the wrong way. Lynch inbounds to Phelps. 3.30 to play in the overtime. Score tied at 66. Reese caught in the double team. Jump pass to Lynch. He'll give it quickly to Phelps. He drives the baseline. Trying to get through. Laid it up off the glass. No good. Montross with a recovery back outside to Reese. Off to Williams. He shoots the three. Good. Yeah. Second three-pointer of the ball game for Donald Williams. It's 71 to 68. Van Exel walks it across the timeline, left side. Tar Heels are in the zone. Right atop that crew cut. Montross for a second had his hands clasped just before he puts him up in the zone. Bounces it in the corner to Nelson. Back it comes to Martin. Now to Van Exel. Over now to Gibson. Back to Blunt. Blunt will give it in the corner to Martin. Reese playing well off of him. Now he gives it high post to Blunt. Blunt looking inside against Montross' outstretched hands. Now to Martin. Martin moving left of the lane. Loops it over to Gibson. Now to Nelson at the baseline. He works up the sideline against Lynch. Off to Gibson. Trying to penetrate. On the drive. Stolen by Lynch. Lynch coming up with a loose ball. Got it to Phelps. Tar Heels will try to pull it back. 71-68. 2.30 left to play in the ball game. And Derek Phelps wants the heels to burn some time. Reese. Now to Williams in the middle. Left sideline to Phelps. Right in the vicinity of the Carolina bench. Back to Reese. That goes back to Phelps. To Lynch. Standing right in front of a standing Dean Smith. Now coming to Phelps. As they move it around the perimeter of the Cincinnati zone. Dean Smith says four corners. Put it on your hip in the center jump circle. And that's what he'll do. Now they start to move. Shot clock is at 10 seconds. Donald Williams looking. Will take an outside shot. It's good. What a big three for Donald Williams. 74-68 with one. about evenly dispersed between Tar Heel and Cincinnati fans, the Carolina contingent. Everybody from corporate executives to just minimum wage types are all standing and clapping. Well, the president of the university system is here. Dick Spitzel can choose the side of the court he wants to operate on. He can get away from Derek Phelps to work against the other guard to look for his shot, a three-point shot, if he wants to. I wouldn't be surprised to see that Heels play some man. 150 to play, six-point Carolina lead. Nelson inbounds the ball to Durden, who's in the lineup. And it will be Lazelle Durden, sophomore from Toledo, getting in front court against Henry Grill. Bounces it to Nelson. Van Exel is at the baseline. Phelps is on him and a man-to-man -to, -man to Van Exel. Phelps runs by him. Van Exel takes the shot. He missed it. George Lynch with a rebound. Got it to Phelps. Phelps will give it right back to Reed. 
Now Reeves against Martin. Backcourt has to pick up the dribble. In trouble. Got it to Phelps. Phelps against Van Axel. And we got a timeout call by Carolina. Boy, that shot clock was about to run out. Carolina would have taken too long to get it across court. How heady is that off the Carolina bench? And we'll stay right here at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. 121 remaining to be played. The shot clock was about to go. Zell Durden both have in the gym range complimenting uh, Nick Van Exel. And this game is still not over yet. Obviously, lots of time remaining and only a two-point difference or a two-possession ball game at six points. The breaks are taking about two minutes, and Dean Smith says about what he has to say to a team in about 60 seconds or less. So the Tar Heels find themselves on the floor a lot of times waiting a good long while for the opposition to come back. Brian Reese will inbound the ball from the sideline. Still in the backcourt. Reese got to get rid of it in five seconds, and he takes a timeout. That is Carolina's last timeout. So the Tar Heels are out of timeouts here at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. No more timeouts remaining. And so we've got timeout on the floor, 121 to play. It remains Carolina 74, Cincinnati 68. Remaining. 121 to play, 74-68, Carolina with the lead. Regulation finished in a 66-all tie. The possession arrow favors Carolina, and team fouls are the Bearcats 8, UNC 10. George Lynch got to get the ball in bounds, and he finally got it into Derek Phelps. Phelps trying to elude the double team, got it to Donald Williams, and then got knocked down. Williams trying to get the ball front court against Terrence Gibson, he does. Now he gets caught in the double team. He's got to get rid of it, got to get rid of it, finally to Montross, and a travel called on Donald now Rodel and Salvadori quickly coming back in for defensive purposes. Williams had taken the ball and gone almost into a fetal position with it, holding it, hoped he would get foul with Cincinnati reaching in, but he didn't. Instead, he didn't hear a whistle. Then he was trying to get rid of it. That's when he got called for the travel. That's a good job by the Bearcats not to foul in the trap. 105 to play. Gibson across the timeline. Now to Nelson, left wing. Back out front, it comes to Gibson. Now to Van Exel. He fires for three. No good. Lynch with another rebound. Unbelievable. Van Exel, one of nine in the second half. He has not, he has only scored two points since four minutes and 50 seconds remained in the first half. He couldn't miss in the first half. He can't buy one in the second half. In fairness to Nick, a lot of his shots, the left-handed feathery three-point touch that he has, have looked good. They've been on line just a little bit short or long. The iron has been unkind to him. Lynch has his 15th double-double of the year, 10 rebounds. He'll go to the line where he's 7 of 8 for the day with 54 seconds remaining to be played, and Eric Martin has just fouled out of the game with that foul a moment ago on George Lynch. He fouls out for the second time today, and he leaves with 54.3 seconds left. George Lynch shooting one and one. Ted Valentine hands the Roanoke senior the ball. Some people are afraid to look. Free throw. No good. Front of the rim. Knocked into the corner. Phelps runs it down. Saved it out of bounds off Perry Nelson. Oh, what an dear. unbelievable play by Derek Phelps. is calling for the triangle defense from the corner. That was only the second missed free throw of the day for George Lynch. He'll come down in the corner to inbound it with 50.7 seconds left. Remember, no timeouts remaining for the Tar Heels. Out in the midcourt here, thrown over Montross's head. Reese tried to save it, and he traveled with it. So the Tar Heels turn it over. Dean Smith, hands behind his head. Rodel and Salvadori coming in for defensive purposes with 48.7 seconds left. That the Tar Heels are having this much trouble getting the ball even inbounds tells you how agile Cincinnati is defensively. Nelson hands it off to Van Exel. He'll give it to Terrence Gibson against Rodel. Trying to run him into a screen. The double team is there. He underhands it to Blunt. Blunt's in trouble down in the corner to Nelson. He shoots from there. No good into Lynch's hand. His 11th rebound of the game. Salvadori cross court to Rodel. He'll give it to Derek Phelps coming down on the left. But they don't need a basket. They need just a burn time. Pass deflected. Caught by Nelson. Got it out to Van Exel. Reese is back. Van Exel flies by. Around finally recovered blood off the glass. No good. Salvadori with a rebound to Phelps. 16 seconds left, and he gets fouled by Gibson on the sideline. Dean Smith wants an intentional foul. Well, I don't know what the drought has been, but let me look here. 
Cincinnati has made one of only seven shots in the overtime. Cincinnati has made only four shots out of its last. Well, Bob Woodruff, our statistician, is going to count it up. Four of its last 21. Phelps to the free throw line as people are starting to head for the exits on Gibson's third personal foul. 15 seconds remain. Just need one here. And it's good. 75 to 68. That's Phelps' third point of the afternoon, but don't believe he hasn't played a great game. He has been magnificent. I voted for him as the MVP of this region. It's between either here or George Lynch. Next free throw missed. Recovered Nelson. Lost now off to Gibson. Gibson coming front court. Bounced it away to Van Exel. Now the shot for Salvadori. Deflects it. Lynch with a rebound to Salvadori. To Phelps. Two. One. Here's the lob to Ronald. The horn goes off. It will not count. But the Tar Heels are going to Bourbon Street. For the second time in three years, Carolina is going to the Final Four. And Cincinnati has been denied that exclusive company of making back-to-back -back Final Fours. It'll be an old friend waiting at the Louisiana Superdome with his Kansas Jayhawks. The Tar Heels and Jayhawks almost met in December out in the Rainbow Classic in Honolulu, Hawaii. But the loss to Michigan in the semifinals prevented that from happening. But the Tar Heels under Deans were number one never before since the seeding process began have more than two top seeds gone to the Final Four. So now it's up to Michigan against Temple later today in Seattle. The regulation game ended at 66 after Carolina had fought back from a 15-point deficit in the final seven minutes of the first half to trail at the intermission by only one. And then a dunk attempt that misfired by Brian Reese. It might have been late. The horn may have gone off before he released it. But then Carolina comes back to wind up winning the game in overtime by seven points in one of the best, most exciting basketball games that you'd ever want to see, and I hope our description has done justice to it.